Hi, I'm Jill from Kite Coat and I'm so pleased to be back with another pattern. This is Em's Tote. I know, she's bigger for me, right? So this is the pattern as it comes. Zipper pocket on the back, full solid base, two slip pockets inside. And that lining is designed to fit well. It is a separate pattern piece. So you can make it up plain. You can make it up with just a pattern without the belt. You can make it plain with the belt. So there's lots of options with this and I have put in a full fabric planner. So it shows exactly which pattern piece goes where and how you can change up that pattern to get any kind of effect that you might like. So I have heard what you have been saying. People don't want to be paying for things they don't need in a pattern. So what I've done, the pattern that this is for M's is exactly what you see here and that is linked below. Also in my shop, and I will link below, is the Tote Booster for M. Yes, it boosts your M to another level. That has a zipper closure for the top, it has a divider inside, a full divider, and it says another inside slip pocket which acts as a divider. It has three pocket options for this front panel, so you can put those on the front or the back. It has an in internal zipper pocket. It has lots of different options. So that is available as a pack with M's, or you can just buy M's and buy the pack later if you decide you want to boost your M. Anyway, if this is the first time to my channel, do please consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up if you like what you see today. Hey, drop me a comment. Do you like this belt feature? Do you like it with a little tri-slide that just sets it off like a fake buckle? Or would you just like it plain? Anyway, I'm going to stop talking now and let's get on and sew this M's tote now. So this is our pieces as they're ready to sew. We have our front panel A, which is designed in this pattern to be a feature, a sublimation print and embroidery. As you can see, I'm using my little dragonfly print here. And I have interfaced that on the back. Now I have got the two B panel pieces. Now the reason I have done two is the fact that if you're doing a fussy cut, it's much easier to line that up to get that right with two pieces rather than mirrors. Now on these, I have asked you to indicate which is the exterior side, and that's so that you know which piece goes to the front and that is the piece that goes to the front. Then we have our base. I haven't interfaced that. I have just put deck of a light or deck of a heavy on that, sorry. Now then we've got our top. Now I do again ask you to put a mark on that, which is the exterior edge, because this edge is going to the lining and the other edge is going to the exterior. We do have a line down the middle, which is where you need to place your deck of a light. And it's quite important where all this is placed for the final outlook of the bag. And I have interfaced that as well. Then we've got our bottom D just interfaced and the same with our back E. So that is interfaced as well. Now you can exchange the back for a whole set of A and 2B. So you've got the panels on both sides, but that is all outlined in the pattern. So that's all our exterior pieces. Now let's have a look at what we need out of non-fray. We have our zipper overlay. Now we need this out of a non-fray fabric, we need our zip and we need a pull. Now with the belt, the straps, you don't have to have these out of non-fray. The belt is decorative only, does not have any structure, but we do recommend you make that out of a lightweight fabric. Um, just because of the thickness that it can have on the bag. Now I'm just going to use this very lightweight vinyl and I'm just going to fold it in. So it has a raw edge. If you're doing this out of cotton, you might want to do this as a double fold as outlined in the pattern. Now with the tab piece, again, very lightweight fabric and we'll talk about that as we're sewing it. With the strap, this vinyl is so light I am doing a double fold and I will put cotton tape in the middle of that as I sew it. So let's look at our linings and our pockets. Now with my slip pocket I've interfaced all of that because I do like a bit of structure and I do show you a line which way it folds. So it's a good idea to do that before as you are doing the cutting. 
my phone pocket I've just interfaced half but it's up to you how you deal with that then I've got my zipper pocket linings now I interface both of mine because my machine does not like sewing just over a single layer of cotton so it's easier and I quite like the pockets to be nice and crisp inside then we have our B back both of those are interfaced and then we talk about the foam now you can either use foam or you can use fleece now the reason I say that is it is quite a small bag so you don't want to be going overly heavy on your structure this is only a three mil foam which is about an eighth of an inch it's designed as headliner foam for cars and it's relatively cheap to get from a auto repair shop as opposed to buying fusible foam or something like that but if you've got fusible fleece or foam by all means use that and I will show you how to attach this at a later stage but that is all we need to make the bag for now so let's get on and sew it so what we're going to do first is prepare our pockets and do all our prep work so let's take our J pocket to start with we've got our pocket and we've got our trim so if we fold our pocket to be right sides together line up the edges wanting to sew down each side at a six millimeter or quarter of an inch seam allowance I'm trying to make an effort to keep my ends all nice and clean so I don't clip those I just fold them over and turn it through I think when it's a square edge it gives you just a nicer finish as if you trim it now don't push anything sharp in here just gently ease that edge out and I put a bit of pressure down the seam with my scissors just to push that right out so now we're going to baste down this edge just right to the very edge now you can do both your pockets at once but I'll do one at a time so clean off your little stragglies because they just get in the way so now we want to put some double-sided tape down the back of our trim now don't go too wide with your double-sided tape or else it can get into your seam allowance and I try to min minimize <laughs> words are so hard minimize sewing over tape as much as I can so place that so it's just under halfway on your trim so that when you fold it over the lines meet so fold it over and press it in place now if it's not perfect don't worry about it just choose the smaller side to sew down so we want to start we want to start sewing just onto our pocket To snip those ends off so that it's nice and clean now get one of your lining G pieces now we should have marked all our centers now of course I haven't so just give them a little nick with the scissors or just draw a line whatever you want to do to draw your center line give that a bit of a fold it's the easiest way to do it just give it a fold now we wanted to line our pocket up so line up the centers now we want to come up from the bottom three inches or 75 mils from the bottom now you can either pin it in place double side tape whatever works for you I'm actually just going to hold it in place now we wanted to sew fairly close to the edge and make sure you backstitch well at the beginning and the end give it a clean up so that's our phone pocket so let's move on and do our slip pocket so I have drawn my line to show which way so down each side with a six millimeter or quarter of an inch seam allowance now this is the short edge obviously So the finger in fold it over 
and just push it through. And again, use your scissors just to put a bit of tension against that line, but don't push out your point too much. Just gently. Again, based along the top like we did with our last pocket. Now you can press this if it's easier, if your iron's handy. Double sided tape down our trim again. I hate getting the tape off, it never comes off properly for me. So again clean up any little nasties and lay it just under halfway along our trim and fold it over. I love this way of doing pockets, in fact I'm trying to do all my pockets like this now. It just looks so much neater in the bag. Again start just on the edge, don't start outside your pocket. Trim the little ends off. So if you just run the scissors along the edge you won't actually cut your pocket which is great because we don't want to be cutting our pocket. Get your other lining and fold it in half like we did before to indicate our halfway. Do a little snip if you haven't marked them already. Now this time we're wanting to come 50 millimeters or two inches down from the top just to be a little bit different. Now I might actually put a pin in this one I think. So that is our second lining all complete. So we can just put those aside for now. So now we are going to prepare our straps, belt and loops. Now our L pattern piece, if you're using a non-fray fabric, cut it in half and just cut it at that half width. If you've got fraying fabric, cut it at the full width. Now I'm using this non-fray thin, so I'm just cut it at the half. So let's get on and prepare that. So just put some double-sided tape down the middle. I might as well do my strap at the same time. So double side tape down the middle. Now you don't have to use double sided tape, you can always clip it in place if you want to. So the belt is optional, you don't have to have that on the bag, but I actually quite like the look. Obviously that's how I designed it. So now we just want to fold our edges into the middle. Now this is going to stay as a raw edge at the back, so we're folding these in so that they meet completely at the back. So that's our belt done. Let's do our loop. Now these are two loops actually, we cut this in half soon but we'll do it as one. So we fold that again to the middle. And the other side as well. So I'm going to throw, sew down these at a eighth of an inch or three mil. Now you can do another row of stitching and have a double top stitch if you want. Now we'll do the same with the loop, just sew down each side at a 3mm eighth of an inch. So that's our belt and our belt loops. Now let's look at our strap. Now I'm going to do the same but I'm going to do a double fold. So I'm going to put double side tape down the middle.
we fold it into the middle. And again, it's easy to turn it over. Now this time, if you don't quite join it and you have a slight gap in the middle so that when you fold it, you're not having a fold on the fold or join on the fold, if that makes sense. finally get this tape off I'll do this one as well fold to the not quite center Now I normally put cotton tape down the middle of my straps but I've just found out I've got none left. Typical. So I actually have put some double sided tape down some backing fabric which I will put on top of this. So this is a just a thin backing fabric. So I am just put double sided tape on the back of it and I'm putting it down the middle down one side. This is to stop the strap stretching because my is so fine. If I knew I didn't have any cotton tape, I would have interfaced it before I started. But anyway, never mind. Sometimes you just have to go with what you have. So now we're going to fold them in half and give them a clip. Now you can either clip them, you can fold them or just hold them in place while you're sewing it. Whatever works for you. So now we're going to sew down each edge at an eighth of an inch or three mil on either side. Maybe I should have sewn them double. I do like double top stitching. So that's all our prep work done. Actually, I might do that. I am going to sew a double, a double seam. So I'm going to sew a second seam at six mil or a quarter of an inch. So now I have to do the same on my loops and my belt. So that's my double stitch belt all done. Right, now we will move on to our front. Now, if you're using a tag or put that on the front, now there is indication on where to put that. So fold all your mark your centers. Now if you're wanting, if you're using an embroidery print or a sublimation print, you may want to choose to put it in a different location to what I say, depending on where your print is or how your embroidery is. I think mine's gonna look okay on the front. It'll look alright. So I first thing I do is glue a bit of decable light on the back. Line up where it's going to go. Now I suggest in the pattern 40 mils or an inch and a half up from the bottom. So I'm just going to line up where my decable is going to go. There'd be nothing worse than your bag tag pulling off through the fabric could there. So I'm just going to glue this decable light. And it's easy enough to mark where your centre line is and then just use your, your backing plate, I can't remember what it's called, to put it to line up where your little lines are going. But you can be flexible where it goes. It, there's no hard and fast rule about where it has to be. If it's on a plain black ground, it looks really good in this location, but you don't want to mess up with your panel while you tag. If 
Finding the holes through a print is always difficult. There's one and the other. And then put some tape over the back of your prongs and double check that it's level. So let's get back to our bag. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our front B right. Now where the exterior line is, is the one that lines up with the front. So we line those up. Let's get our little tags out of the way. I'm going to have a collection of those in a minute. Okay, so line up the top and bottom. And there is little notches, but if you haven't cut them exactly, then just make sure it's centered. And my panel shrunk slightly when I interfaced it. Never mind. We can work with that. So I do both at once, line up the left and the right sides. And we're going to sew down each of these at 3 8 of an inch or 10 millimeters. So now we want to open our seams out to each edge so that the seam allowance is facing the outside and top stitch down each side at a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. So now we want to take a B bottom and line it up along the bottom of the front. So it is shaped, but it will line up perfectly with the seam allowances. You want to clip that in place and sew along there at a 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch. Fold the, the bottom down so that the seam allowance stays down towards the bottom and top stitch along there again at quarter of an inch or six mil. And that is our front all done. I think that little print is quite cute. So I'll put that aside and we will get on with our back. So we need our back, which is our E, our zipper overlay and our zipper. And we'll need our linings too. All we need at the moment is our zipper overlay. We'll deal with that first. So put some double sided tape. Because this is so thin, I have doubled up or sandwiched my vinyl together because it's just crazy thin, this vinyl. It's a little bit overkill, but I like a nice solid overlay. So put your double sided tape around the edge. I like to put it with just about a quarter of an inch away from the edge all the way around. one inch from the top. So it's better if you use a longer ruler because obviously you can measure from each side. So I think I remember it was three inches from each side, but I can't remember. Yes, it was. And one inch at the top. Now I always say double check. It's like measure three times and cut once. It's the same thing with overlays. Measure heaps. A crooked pocket is nothing worse. So now we're just going to sew right around the very edge at less than 3 mil or less than an eighth. Now you can either leave long tails and pull them through or you can backstitch. Now I'm on black on black so I'm just going to backstitch. That's our zipper overlay in place. Now we just want to snip in the middle. Do not cut your overlay. Get your scissors underneath 
and the tape stops you going too far anyway but don't clip this the overlay I have done that before and it made me cry and then just trim the piece off out the back so you want a few mils on either side of the overlay which is a gap so that you don't see any raw edges around the edge of your zip That's our overlay all done. Put that aside and get our pocket and our zip. So we want to put our zip right side up on the right side of the fabric long ways. Between a quarter of an inch and an eighth. So just move that up flip it over right sides together and line up the lining so they are right side together line up the zip at the top and again sew down there at 1 8 so i also sew down those seams flat so i just sew down the very edge of the seam just to flatten it out So now we want to put our zipper pull on. I think this rainbow, the zebra with the rainbow teeth is really cute. You can put any color zipper pull on you want. It has been really popular on our website. So now we want to put that behind our overlay by putting some double-sided tape down each side of those seams. But I just keep it out of the edge by about an inch because you're just going to pull it out anyway. So just in the middle. Now take one piece off. I usually take the top off. And I want mine so that the zip closes to the left and opening to the right. So make sure that that's the right way before you put it in there. And line it up center to the pocket. You can feel where that is and see the sides. Now if you have to do this five times to get it in place, or 20 times, please do it. Try and get it as centered in this as you can. And then take our other piece of tape off. And put down the other side. Now we want to sew around the middle of that zipper overlay with the same amount as we did before. Less than 3mm or less than, so less than an eighth of an inch. Now I use my owl to hold it in place because it can move around. And because you're going down off the bit you've cut around. Make sure your zipper pull is out of your way. That's our zipper pull all done. Well, our zip works. So now flip that over and pull the lining down off the tape so that it's flat along the top and down the sides. Trim along the bottom, but do not trim the exterior. It should be just slightly longer, so it shouldn't be in the way. Now flip it over and pull the exterior back at the sides so you can sew all the way around there. And just close up your pocket. Now if you need to trim your zip, do so now. 
and if you ever trim your zip make sure you melt the edge to secure it but don't set your bag on fire so that's our zipper pocket all done make sure there's no holes all lines up that's cool now we get our bottom now I do suggest you flip your pocket back up the top so that you don't get it caught in the seam so line up the D like we did on the front and now we're going to sew along the bottom with a 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch Is flip it back over and make sure the seam is lying down towards the bottom and top stitch and that is our back all done so take our C top and our straps now with mine it doesn't matter which way they go up if you've done a double strap obviously it does now we want to make some marks in from the edge now we're going 115 millimeters or four and a half inches now the straps are an inch so if you wanted to draw a mark half an inch on either side of that mark that gives you an outline place to place your straps as well so now we want to take our strap now you want your strap to be right sides together with the fabric so that when it turns up it's the right way around so line them right sides together and have them overhanging maybe half an inch and line them up with the lines you've just marked then take the end of your C that is marked exterior and line it up with the top edge it is quite shaped and it's that way on purpose so that your lining sits nice and flush in the bottom of the bag oh no I forgot to mark my centers let's mark our centers again so it's easier to line up your center line up your ends and we're going to sew along here now make sure your straps stay straight and we're going to sew along there at 3 eighths of an inch or 10 mil now I do double back a little bit over the edge of my straps just to take the pressure off the stream, seam now just flip that up okay so I have just made a change to the pattern so I've unpicked what I've done so we used to top stitch all of this facing up which is fine if you're using lighter weight fabrics etc but if you're using a thicker fabric it gets a little bit thick so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over so that we've got the pocket on the top and we're going to hold the very seam just by the strap and we're going to make a nick in the seam allowance just on the back fabric down towards the seam now do not cut your seam this is just so that we can move the bottom of the strap out of our top stitching so the bottom of the strap should be facing downwards and the top of your strap facing upwards so again we snip into the seam on either side of the straps but only on the back fabric not on the C top so that when you pull your strap out push your seam allowance up towards the top and the bottom of your straps come downwards so you want to top stitch with everything up except the bottom of your straps so most of the seam allowance is at the top and your straps are facing down the bottom underneath and we'll just top stitch along there at a quarter of an inch as we have been so six mil quarter of an inch so make sure your straps do stay down as you're stitching and we want to top stitch the top of the strap into the seam allowance on the front now as I'm approaching the strap and as going off it I just back stitch one stitch so that where it catches it gives that stitch a little bit of reinforcement so that is our back all done our straps in place it's caught in the foot and our little bits of the back are out so as you can see it keeps that seam 
a lot less bulky and it sits nice and flat. So we'll do the same with our front. We'll make our marks along the front 115 millimeters or four and a half inches in from either side. Line our straps up right sides together so the right side of the strap is right side together with the fabric and have it overhang the edge by about half an inch. Now it is easier to base these in place. Make sure there's no bends or twists in the strap. And again, get our C-top and it's the edge that we have indicated as the exterior that lines up with the top of the front. We should have marked our centers. Clip that in place. And we're wanting to sew along here at, again, a 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch. Now I lost some footage here so I've had to bring in a bit from the back. So this is picturing the back but it is the same process of snipping the seam allowance so that we can put our strap down. But of course on the front you will have the panel, you won't have the back pocket. So snip those so that you can bring the strap down again like we did before and turn that over and top stitch down there the same with our straps up at the front and the straps down at the back like we did with the the back top stitch along there at a six mil or quarter of an inch and remember when you get to the strap back and forwards slightly when you go on and off the strap for extra reinforcement so i've got my bit of foam that i have prepared now i have cut the slit in there now as you can see this has to line up with the bottom of our pocket. So it has to be lined up with the top and then you want to cut the line across it as per the pattern piece that lines up with the bottom of your pocket because what we're gonna do here is pull our pocket through the foam or the fleece. So we want to line that up top of the deck of a light or the line in the pattern if the deck of a isn't in the right place. So we and we want to make sure the foam is outside of all our seam allowances. So, so I'm going to glue this. So what we'll do is flip that bit back, spray both sides of that, glue that in place, turn it over, and then flip the bottom up and spray that. The front is all in one piece, so you can glue that all at the same time. So with contact glues, I suggest you do this outside and definitely away from your machine. I'm going to do that now. Now this is the glue that I use. It's an ADOS multi-purpose spray adhesive and it's for fabric and it's for foam so it's great but please test any spray glue on a scrap of fabric if you're going to use it. So as you can see that's all adhered back and front and that looks fine. Now I have had some of my testers sew it foam into their seam allowance with fine fabric or thinner fabric and said it has worked fine. So what we want to do now is put both of our right sides together along the bottom seam and we're going to sew along the bottom at a 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch. Now you should be sewing right next to your foam but not on it. So now what we want to do now is open up that seam, butterfly it. So press the seam open and turn it over. So it's easier if you roll that in because it probably won't fit in the throat of your machine. So I'm going to do this at 6mm. We do cover this soon, 
but I'm going to do it at 6 mil. So that's all butterfly nice. I love a nice butterfly seam and that gives us a really nice structure on the back. So I'll put that aside for a minute. We'll get our base pieces or our base F which we have got the deck of a heavy attached to. So I'm going to put a piece of double sided tape down each side. So then we want to take that off and fold these directly over right along the line of the Decaville Heavy. So it's nice and firm. Pull it over and smooth it over. So now we're going to stitch around each side at a six mil or quarter inch seam allowance. Now we want to get our exterior back again, open it up and put some double sided tape on either side of the stitch lines on that butterflied seam. Keep it out of the edges because you are going to sew down there. So now we want to get our base and we want to line it up centered in that gap. Give it a bit of a firm tug out so that it's separated. And we want to sew right around the edge of the base at a 3mm seam allowance. So 3mm, eighth of an inch. So that's our base support all on. So now we want to attach our lining. So get your two lining pieces. Now I start with the one with the phone pocket. Now I like that on the front, attached to the front, but if you prefer that on the back, then choose which pocket you would like on the front. So right sides together and line up the centers. Put a clip on each side. Now we're going to sew along there so we may as well attach the other side while we're here. Line up the centers, right sides together, and a clip in each end. So now we're gonna sew across both of those at a 10 millimeter, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now on the bottom you want to fold the lining down, keeping the seam allowance down towards the lining and sew quite close, just a couple of mil or less than an eighth of an inch into the lining. And do that on the other side. So down the edge the same seam allowance. And then just fold your lining over it, keeping the seam allowance down and less than three mil or less than an eighth of an inch. So it's just along the edge of the lining. You want to hold this out, separating it so that it's not coming back in place. So now the bag's all in one piece. So now we want to put our exteriors together and our linings together and make sure the straps and everything are inside. So we want to line up our seams where they join the top and clip those in place. Now it is important that these seams line up because you're gonna, this is gonna be very visible on the outside of the bag. and work our way down to the base. Now you are going to have to flex the base together to get a clip in the bottom and then make sure your bottom and front seams all line up. Now 
Then come down to the other end of the lining and continue clipping along the lining. And clip the other side as well while you're here. Line up the main seams first. Make sure your straps are all tucked inside. Make sure your seams again line up at the bottom. And then you will need to flex your base together to get a clip on the end. Go back down to your lining end and put a clip in the end. And just clip along. So now we want to stitch down both sides of those at a 10 mil, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Be careful to hold your seams in place as they're going around. And again, you shouldn't be sewing over the foam, you should be sewing next to it. And the other side. Just cut some little nicks just in your seam allowance over that curve. Um, so that's between on the top, the C top bit where it's joined, just some little nicks because that's going to fold over itself and so this helps it sit a lot flatter. So don't go to your seam, just on the edge. Now it depends on the fabric you're using, but if you're using a fine fabric, you might want to get your iron in here and iron this flat. Mine's a bit thick, so I'm not going to be able to. So what I like to do, if it's a thicker fabric, just put a little bit of glue on the sides of the seam where this, the joining seams are, because they're going to want to pull back all the time. So just on the edge of the seams and over that curve does make a difference to the bag if these seams are open. If you're using thin fabric, please be careful using glue. You don't want it to go through your fabric. So it really doesn't take very long to do this and it makes a huge difference to the look of your bag when it's finished. It's a little bit awkward with the foam in, but it's, it's worth doing. Now I'm getting messy with glue. Now I use Helmer fabric glue for all this. It is brilliant stuff. It's the clear one um, and it dries extra tech, like it dries really quickly. It's not good to have it on your machine, is it? Better clean that off. Okay, now we want to line up our bottom edges of our lining and put a clip in either edge because all we're going to do is sew about an inch at each edge because we want to leave a turning gap. So the seam allowance is the same as what you have been using. Now we go to the corner and just push it down towards the base and that should naturally bring that down. Now if the corners are too tight and it's coiling in, just do a tiny little nick just in the notch. Now just a tiny bit so that your base can sit out flat. So get your finger in and pull your base out flat. Butterfly your seams and they should line up perfectly. 
put a couple of clips in place. So all we're going to do now is sew along that line at the 10 mil 3 eighths of an inch. Now it's up to you whether you find it easier one way or the other. I find it easier sewing for the base. Now I tend to sew across and back and then move down and sew another seam about an eighth of an inch within the seam allowance just for extra reinforcing. If you're using vinyl miss the second stitch but do the reinforcing stitch. Then we'll look at the other corner. Tiny little nick in each corner. Less than like a quarter of an inch. Tiny little nick. Just if you need it you may not. And then again butterfly your seams and clip that in place. And again we're going to sew across there at a 10mm seam allowance. Don't trim your seams but do take off any little messy edges. So now we want to come to this end and do the same with our lining. So take the corners of the notch and pull them outwards so that it brings the seams in together and butterfly them. So your seams should be directly on top of each other. Now you can feel where they are when you get your fingernails on either side of the seam. So just put a clip over the butterfly seams and then I like to put a, a clip further out. Do the same with the other end. Butterfly your seams. And then just put one on each side. It's then we just want to sew along the straight line like we did with the base. Now I just do a single line here. I don't go back and forwards. Make sure your seams stay butterflied out. That one wanted to pop back under. So that's what you've got like that. Now if you fold that down, let the seams give them a bit of pressure and just give a finger crease across there. That'll make it easier to shut the seam later. So now put your hand inside the bag. Make sure your seams are still open. Now I've got a little bit of vagrant foam sitting off the edge there that I'm going to snip off. So push the corners down into the bag on both sides and then just start rolling it in. It's a really easy turn, it's not a struggle by any means. So when you get to that you can fold the base a little bit to pull it out through the hole. So make sure your seams are staying out folded. So then you want to get in, put your fingers right next to the foam. So make sure there's next to the foam and make sure the seams are open and fold it right on that point. And you'll be able to feel when it's right. Put a clip on that edge and do the same with the other. So put your fingernail right in where the foam is, right next to it, and fold it over. So push the lining down firm in the bag. Make sure everything fits, make sure it all goes where it's supposed to. This is obviously going to need a good iron when it's finished. So then you can feel where the foam stops and starts. So you can just roll it down quite firmly around the edge of the foam because the decable light is right at the same point. So just clip around there. So 
So you can measure this to make sure it's even, or if you've got your decibel and the foam in exactly the right place, it shouldn't really matter. This is definitely going to need a bit of an iron, isn't it? So now bring this strip, strap up in a straight line and just include them in the clips at the top. Now you don't want it too tight because you are going to put the belt through here if you are doing the belt. Now if you're not putting the belt on, I suggest sewing a rectangle around the top of these straps between where you join them at the top and the bottom and make a feature out of that for extra support. So I'm going to sew from the inside. Make sure everything is sitting down nice and firm before you start top stitching. Now if you prefer to stitch from the outside, you can turn your bag inside out. Make sure your straps, again, back stitch at the beginning and end of the strap, just one stitch or the whole strap, whatever you feel comfortable doing. I'm sewing black on black, so I'm quite happy to go right back against the whole thing. You do need to give your straps a bit of support. Now, if you're just wanting to do one row of stitching, you can always put a couple of rivets in the top and bottom of the straps, which looks quite cool. Make sure they are definitely straight, else they are going to come in at an interesting angle. So that is pretty much our bag ready. So push the lining right down in the bag. Now we need to do our belt loops and our belt. We need our belt and our belt loops. When I say belt loops, we have to cut this in half, just fold it lengthways. Now this can be a little bit awkward depending on your sewing machine and what you've used. So if it's too thick, you can rivet these to the top and the bottom as opposed to sewing them. So we're going to put that right sides together, so wrong side facing up, and we want it just inside our seam allowance. You can sew down in the ditch if that's easier and if it's too thick to sew on the seam. So. This can be a bit awkward because you're wanting to see what you're doing, so squash your bag down. So what I do is sew across and back, so across and back, and stop with your needle just off the loop. Lift your presser foot, bring the strap back up, but leave it a bit loose, then sew across and back one stitch just to reinforce it. So if it's too thick to sew back over at top stitch, don't include the loop in your top stitching. Just do another row a little bit further up. So when you sew your loop at the top, so you just turn that over a little bit. Now this is much thinner because it doesn't have a turning seam at the top. So it makes it a lot easier so you can definitely include it in your top stitching. I just back stitch at the beginning and the end. Now you can double back over that if you want, but again, if this is too thick, just pop a rivet in the top. This is purely decorative. It has no structural bearing on the bag at all. So let's do the other side. and get our loop right sides together and just off the seam like we did before. So again, sew across and back just so that your needle's off it. Lift the loop under your press, presser foot again and finish sewing over the top. And that might 
so that's our belt loops so now we'll get our belt now you can also put a fake buckle on here or a real buckle so you can just get a tri slide or a slide adjuster and put that on the front and keep threading the belt through So just keep threading it through. Now you do want it to join at the back on one of the straps or at the side under the belt loop. So I'm going to join mine under one of the strap loops. So make sure the belt is a little bit loose and you only want it to overlap by about three quarters of an inch at the most. So 20 mil, three quarters of an inch. So pull that through and you want to pull it away from your bag. So clip it together and pull it away from the bag so that you can sew it in place. Now this is going to be hidden. So I leave my edges raw. So I sew two rows down here, one at either end of the strap where it's overlapping. So back and forwards on each. And just trim that up. Now you can put a dab of glue in behind it once it's all finished so that it stays under the strap, but it's entirely up to you. So that is our belt and straps. So now we want to take our lining up out of the bag. Now because we sort of gave it a bit of a crease before, we should have a crease line where the seam goes. So just clip those seams together. You should also be able to find your centre mark and use that if you need to. Now I try and sew across the whole seam and that way it looks a little bit more purposeful than just sewing a little gap in the end. So sew as close as you can while catching both edges. You can also change your cotton to match your lining if you want it to be a little bit more discreet. And then you simply pop your lining back in your bag. Now if you have got your iron handy, I suggest giving your lining a bit of an iron before you pop it back in your bag. So that is our M's tote, all finished. So it's a really quick, simple sew, it's got the belt. So don't you agree, it's the perfect bag to set off your sublimation or your HDV prints, even your embroidery as well as a place to show off a funky zip at the back. So you can dress that up as much as you want. You can put rivets on the bottom and the top of the strap loops, or you can just leave it the way it is. I hope you have as much fun making this pattern as I do. So if you like what you've seen, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe, and we'll see you in our next video.